Welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Southern. This is part two of the set of examples on modelling with logarithms. Uh, this example is also taken from the Pearson edXL year one textbook. Uh, and the difference with this example here is we are given the graph uh, without any original data. Uh, we just have to use that graph to find um, the nonlinear relationship uh, between two variables. So here we go. The graph represents the growth of a population of bacteria p uh, over t hours. Uh, the graph has a gradient of 0 0.6 uh, and meets the vertical axis at 0 0.2 as sh uh, 0 0.2, I should say, rather than 0 0.2, 0 0.2 as shown. Um, a scientist suggests that this growth can be modelled by the equation p equals a b to the power of t, where a and b are constants to be found. Uh, and the first thing we're being asked to do is to um, write down an equation for the line. Now, if we're given that the gradient is 0 0.6 and that the intercept uh, is 0, 0.2, uh, then the temptation for part A here would be to write that y equals 0 0.6x plus 2, which is fine. We've just got to think a little bit about what the variables are that we're dealing with in this particular scenario. Well, first of all, this isn't an x-axis. This is a t axis um, because uh, we've got t hours that we're modeling here uh, and the other thing is that this isn't a y axis this is a log p axis where the population the number of bacteria p uh, has been logged um, and the purpose of that is to turn what would have been a non-linear relationship uh, into a linear relationship uh, by taking logs of all these large values to turn them into smaller ones and creating the um, linear relationship you see here so the implications of that for the equation of my straight line is that instead of writing y, I'm going to be writing log p. And instead of writing x, I'm going to be writing t. Uh, so the equation of the line in part a is log p equals 0.6t plus 2. Uh, and what we're now being asked to do is to uh, find the values of a and b, uh, giving our answer to three significant figures. Uh, and what that means is that we're going to have to turn the equation that we found in part A into the form P equals AB to the power of T, um, as we've been given in the question here. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to rewrite that um, equation as the start of my working for part B. Uh, and then we just need to think about how we're going to make P the subject of this equation. Well, when we just write log, it means base 10. So what that means is I can rewrite this as P equals 10 to the power of 0 0.6 T plus 2. And it's very, very important that I have this bracket here because if this is log base 10 of P, then P is equal to 10 to the power of this whole right hand side of the equation. Um, and what I'm now going to do is to rearrange this right hand side so that it looks like a B to the power of T. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is to think, well, what calculation would I be doing with indices if I end up adding the two powers? Um, and that would be multiplication. So I can write this now as two separate uh, parts, 10 to the power of 0 0.6t multiplied by 10 to the power of 2. And then I just need to have a look at this bit here. Now, because we have 0 0.6 multiplied by t, uh, it is possible to say that that is the same as 10 to the power of 0 0.6 to the power of t, because when you have powers either side of a bracket like so, you would multiply them. Uh, so if I work out uh, 10 to the power of 0 0.6 as uh, a number, that comes out as 3.981, which I'm going to put in my bracket instead of this, to the power of t. And then 10 squared obviously is um, 100. Now, rounding this value here to uh, three significant figures, as I've been asked to, I'm just going to go up here now for my conclusion to part B. Uh, I'm going to say that P is equal to 100 multiplied by 3.98 to the power of T. Uh, and just comparing that with the form of the equation that I've been given, P equals AB to the power of T. Uh, we can see that A is equal to 100 and that B is equal to 3.98, and both those values have been rounded to three significant figures. Now in part C, I'm being asked to interpret the meaning of the constant A 
in this model? Well, this constant A here, which is the number 100. Uh, what I've got to think about here is, well, what if T equals zero? Well, if T equals zero, then 3.98 to the power of zero would be one. Uh, so that would mean that P is 100 multiplied by one. Uh, so when T equals zero, P would equal 100. Uh, so the value of A is the val uh, sorry, when uh, the constant A is the value of P uh, when T equals zero, which means that there were initially uh, 100 bacteria um, present in the colony. Uh, so A uh, is the initial value of P. So there were 100 bacteria in the colony originally or at the start of the experiment. So there we go. We were given a linear line uh, with the y uh, vertical axis being log p and the horizontal axis being t. We were able to write a linear relationship linking t and log p. Um, and then using our rules of logarithms and exponentials, we were able to turn that into a nonlinear relationship between P and T uh, in the form P equals a B to the power of T. Uh, and that is job done. Thank you very much as always for your company.